This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car, but I'm also a Meals and Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. As a volunteer, you deliver a hot, nutritious meal and a friendly hello to someone just like your mother, grandfather, or next door neighbor. These seniors are inspiring people with incredible stories to share, and they love to see you. The smiles you get back are priceless. Delivering with Meals on Wheels is easy, and you don't have to drive like me for it to be quick. You can volunteer your lunch break once a week or just once a month. With one in six seniors facing hunger and many more living in isolation, your lunch break can make a real difference. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. <sighs> okay, Simon. What are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. And what do people normally wear? Clothes. Exactly. So now Mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Clothes keep us warm, they look good, and if we go out without them, the neighbors will talk. So it's important to know how to get dressed. Here's how it's done. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. If you're wearing a tie, it goes over, round, round, through, and pull tight. Tuck your shirt into your pants and zip up your fly. Socks go in first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops. The rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and you left with bunny ears. I love bunnies. Good to know. Now remember, spots don't go with stripes, socks don't go with sandals, and if you've tucked in your shirt, wear a belt. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But spending just two minutes twice a day making sure they brush their teeth is easier and could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. That's two a message from the Partnership for Healthy Miles, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. So you see, son, good manners are very, very important. Someday, many years from now, when you're a grown-up, you'll be a man. And when you are, you should be a gentleman. Do you want me to go through it one more time? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome, and excuse me. Sit up straight, hold doors open for ladies. If a door's shut, then knock first. Don't burp, don't swear, don't speak with your mouth full, don't reach across people's plates, keep your elbows off the table. What table? And don't interrupt. While we're at it, don't stare, don't use foul language, don't call people names, but do remember people's names. Always share your toys, play nice, and cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. On the bus, give up your seat to anyone who has trouble standing. Bottom line, treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Got it? Got it. And stop picking your nose. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But spending just two minutes twice a day making sure they brush their teeth is easier and could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. For fun two-minute videos to watch while brushing, visit 2min2x.org. That's 2min2x.org. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Miles, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. Hey, there he is. How's it going? I'm having a stroke. Are you going to shake my hand or what? I'm having a stroke. Wow, you're not even moving your arm. I'm having a stroke. Are you okay? I'm having a stroke. Your face looks weird too. I'm having a stroke. Are you having a seizure or something? I'm having a stroke. When someone is having a stroke, they may not be able to say it with words, but their body language will tell you loud and clear. I'm having a stroke. You just need to know the sudden signs. Look for FAST, F-A-S-T. F, face drooping, A, arm weakness, or S, speech difficulty, then T, time. Time to call 911 immediately, because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment, and that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Know the sudden signs, face, arm, speech, time. Spot a stroke, fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. Or if that resume was from someone who worked 12 hour shifts at the recycling company with my dad, who's 72. That taught me a work ethic that I carry with me every day. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone Growing up where I did, a lot of things could have gotten in the way of my goals. But I learned to push through, and that's what I bring to work every day. So maybe it's time we look beyond the resume and look to grads of life. Discover new ways to develop great talent that are so much more than what's on paper at gradsoflife.org. A public service. It, it, it's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio.
Network. Cross the bottom line. Cross go go sepsa. And so, goodbye. <laughs> and good night. Bang. Settle. To Off the Mats with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Saturday, and you know what that means. If you're a wrestling fan, then this is the show for you. Welcome to a show where we talk all things wrestling and sports entertainment. Welcome to Off the Mat on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. I'm Alex Lowe's, and with me is my co host, my partner in crime. All the way up in, all the way up in the Big Apple, Josh Silverberg. How's it going, Josh? What's going on, man? What's happening? Jam packed show. We got AEW, NXT, all the good stuff, all of our new segments, and we have our new. We have a guest coming on in a few minutes. But Alex, let's get that house cleaning. You gotta get to, man. Exactly. Stick of us here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network for awesome shows. But before we get started, we got to do a little house cleaning, and that's tell our listeners and followers how they can listen to listen and access all of our shows because it's not just it's not just wrestling on the w on wwsrn we have a variety of shows that you can listen to we have down to the wire with speedy and errol marks below the mic the weekend crunch with errol marks and josh silverberg the ryan hickey show the wise guys weapons hots the sports weapons hot the sports hit list and so much more you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Off the Mat WWSRN. Same for Twitter. And also, you can follow our personal Twitters at Josh Silverberg and at, jo- at, Slo- at Show Slows. And also, download the WWSRN app. It's absolutely free. And you can access any of our shows and check out all the articles written by show hosts, as well, get all of your, as, well as get all the shows with a push of a button. You can download the app in Google Play or from the Apple App Store. Please check out all the shows because it's it's only it's only going to get better here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network as we continue to grow. And now that we have wrapped up the house cleaning, it's time to get into WWE, AEW, and NXT. And Josh, like you said, I believe we have a special guest. We do, we do, and he's ready to go. He is my former co-host with our show. There he is right there. He's got to move over a little bit, but that's okay. Nope, other way. There we go. <laughs> he's, he's my former co-host on Takedown Breakdown. He's one of my best friends. He, I consider him a brother, that's for sure. He's the biggest AEW homer on the planet, and he knows it. He's not afraid to say it. Mr. Lyle Gillen. What's happening, man? First, un- unmute your microphone now. You could you could get going, and uh, there you go, man. What's happening, dude? Nice shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you. Huh? Glad to yeah, be on. Yeah, I like the shirt. It's really cool. Well, uh, I chose to wear this one. I just started reading the book, and uh, it's really good so far. How was the book? Did, did you get the signed copy of it, or did you? Did I you did not. Re- oh, you just missed it then. That's yeah, right. You, I, you, I, you, I tried. You've met Mad Nick before. You've met Mad Nick before, though. So I have. That's, that's good very nice people. All right, Alex. So you you had a topic that you wanted to get off. to. Yeah. So to get to kick things off here, let's start with talking about the future of WWE. What did you guys think about Raw and SmackDown? Are you okay with the product and how it's currently going? If you're still a fan and you're watching us live, are you still watching WWE's main programming, or have you tuned out completely? We want to know, fans. You can leave comments on the Facebook Live and Twitter. We want to hear from you and hear your comments on this. But currently, the USA Network officials are upset with WWE Raw viewership. USA Network wants to wants WWE to feature more dark and violent content. And the problem is, Vince he th- he he does not care what anybody says or thinks. He he can't take he cannot take criticism. And you should take criticism and try to make the main roster shows better. He should meet Lyle. He'll give him a lot of criticism. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> that's for sure 
Um, and coming up with better creative materials, you need to come up with better storylines and things that are going to grab people's attention. And with the audience at home and around the world, and for a long time, I was a WWE fan. I was a big fan of the main roster. Now I'm just a fan of NXT, the yellow brand. But for a long time, I could see that the WWE programming was falling apart. And it, it, it just got so bad to the point where I completely tuned out. And but but Vince, he he truly has lost his touch. And I feel like that ratings are important and you need to help your product grow and get get the product attention because you can't help the program grow if it's not getting enough TV viewership. Not only are you hurting the product, but you're hurting the major networks your shows are on. And Raw had the second lowest viewership of all time this week. And they are not getting enough draw to Monday Night Raw, and something desperately has to change. Something needs to be done here. Lyle, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? Because I know you, when before I did uh, Off the Mat with Alex, you were very, very blunt about your assessment of Raw and SmackDown. And you, I know for a fact, have completely tuned it out pretty much. You can't even watch it anymore. What yeah. are your thoughts on what, what, what Raw and SmackDown have to do to just – fix their product i mean there's so much stuff they got to do there is a lot they have to do um and i don't trust that anything that they will do will fix anything because you look back over the last this isn't a problem of just now this is a problem last oh, five last years maybe years. yeah like i remember when the authority came out and they said oh well now the fans are of the authority and gonna try and fix raw and we're gonna listen that didn't happen no and i think retribution was supposed to fix Raw 2. That definitely didn't happen. Um, They're a squash it, group at this point. Yeah, it's, it's just, there's nothing that they can do with Vince at the helm, and what I think the biggest problem is, now, SmackDown for the last few years has always been getting better and better, than compared to Raw, at least. Um, and every single time, and this is not a new thing, this goes back to when Heyman was in charge of SmackDown, any time it's better than Raw. Vince will do something to try and stop that and make Raw the better show. And it never happens. And I think it's no. very obvious that Vince does not do much with SmackDown. Um, he does everything with Raw. I, you, you look, and he, I don't think he's doing much with Roman Reigns right now because he's a completely different character. He's a better character. I think SmackDown is a better of the two shows, but I don't think it's by much. I just... I, you, you look at what they did yesterday. They had Otis beat Nakamura in three minutes. That's really bad. Yeah, it's just, it's bad taste and it's just bad. It doesn't get, it's not helping the audience. It's not helping get audience attention. And you're trying to get your pro, you're trying to get all your programs out there. You're trying to get SmackDown out there. You're trying to get Raw out there, including main event, all the smaller WWE shows. And it just hasn't been working out for them very well. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It, 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 it's the fact of the matter is this, and I know both of you have touched on it already. I just, I'm just going to add to it. it. Like Lyle said, when you have a very talented wrestler in Shinsuke Nakamura, who people once considered one of the best wrestlers in the world, and he's losing to a guy in Otis who I think has absolutely no skill set. I don't care if he's listening or not because he'll probably never come on the show, and if he ever wanted to, I would actually reject it. That's how much I hate him. Um, I, I think to me, he's a talentless guy. He's a guy that I don't understand why they're pushing him. I don't even know why they gave him the money in the bank contract in the first place because he wound up losing it anyway. So the whole thing was a fail at the in the first place. You know, to me, I, I, I think when you look, I mean, like I said, the thing that came out too was that AEW's demographics are now beating Monday Night Raw's demographics now. I don't think WWE ever envisioned that was going to happen. They thought maybe NXT – but to beat the one of their head honcho shows in Monday Night Raw, I mean, Bruce Pritchard, I know, is running Raw now. Um, and I like Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard was a big part of the Attitude Era. But the thing is, there's only so much that WWE can do right now. And it's just, I know, Alex, you and I, we were talking off the air about it. And I know, Lyle, you and I have spoken about this many times before. But SmackDown, it's so much easier to basically get out the ads because you could get it out. Look, right now. The Big Ten Championship is on Fox. What network is SmackDown on? It's on Fox. Fox. Everybody in the country is watching the Big Ten Championship right now. That right there and NFL Sundays. You can advertise 
easily for SmackDown, people will tune in. The problem with USA Network is they don't have any sports on their network unless no, it's the N- unless it's the NHL playoffs every now and then, and they only get the NHL playoffs for like the first round. That's all they get. That's also why SmackDown is beating the crap out of view- the viewership. And I agree with Lyle in the sense of this too. They're they are the much better show. What they've done with Roman Reigns is to me phenomenal. What they did with him, they completely gave him a facelift. They figured, okay, there's no fans in the stands. Let's try it this way, and let's see how it does and how it goes. And it's taken off. People love oh, it. Oh, yeah. People love this new this new, new forms Roman Reigns. They love the new idea how he's the tribal chief. He's the head of the table. I like this new gimmick, and I love the work that, that SmackDown is putting in with Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. I think it's, it's coming together perfectly. Well, Paul Heyman w- said it too. Yeah, go, Lyle. Go, go, go. I would like to be um, fair to WWE, though. They don't have the same competition that they have with NXT. So it's a little different. They really don't have much of a wrestling competition at all. So I don't put much into AEW beating them in the demographic because they have uh, Monday Night Football to compete with. Mm-hmm. That's completely different than NXT uh, and Absolutely. AEW are competing with. Exactly. There it, isn't it, really it, that sport that is must watch on on wednesday nights that there's, they have there's to nothing. compete with yeah and, um it's it's just it's it's a different environment so i will we'll be fair to wwe and, and raw with that aspect but i just don't think there is anything that's going to be done anything they say will be done will really work because that's what i expect i just don't think anything with wwe is going in the right direction I'm just curious because, Lyle, you brought up a really good point. I know, Alex, you mentioned it too earlier about the viewership and everything. I look at it like this. I am curious with the NBA coming back Wednesday nights on ESPN and stuff. And I know, obviously, look look at this Wednesday, for example, AEW is going to be on after the NBA is on. And to be fair, the NBA should absolutely get first rights over AEW because they've been on TNT much longer and their viewership is much bigger for the NBA Mm -hmm. Then it would be for wrestling. Exactly. Fair is fair. We may not be basketball fans here, but fair is fair. That's always what the case is going to be. I do want to touch on one thing, and I want to get Josh, Josh and Lyle's opinion on this. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Keith Lee being moved down to the main event, the main event show? I think it's absolutely bogus because Keith Lee, he has so much more talent than that. He's capable of putting on big matches. He's capable of of being on a bigger stage. And I think Vince is missing missing the point here. I, I really think he needs to give Keith Lee a chance to grow, and he's not doing that. Lyle, you can start first. Um, I think Keith Lee is extremely talented in the ring. But like we saw after the week after he won the title in NXT, he's not very good on the mic. And if you're on the main roster and you're pretty bad on the mic, which I think he is, I think he's very monotone, um, you're not really going to, go too far or it's going to be hard for Vince to give you a push. Um, I think Drew was also awful on the mic. I think he's very monotone and mm. it took him a few years to finally give Drew that big main event push. I, I he's think that he's, I think he, he has, yes, but he's still monotone. I, I think that Vi, uh, Vince will eventually give Keith Lee the reins because he's just so good. He's a big guy. He's athletic in the ring. I just don't think it will happen right away. Um, no, I think it's he should have had that. Time. I think it should have. He should have had that NXT title reign longer, longer. before he got called up. Um, I feel that ever since he got called up, NXT. I'll re- reword that. Ever since he won the title, NXT has been on a major down downfall. He lost the title right away to Karrion Cross and Cross. Then. Cross got, got hurt. hurt, and then and then, Cole, and then uh, got, hurt. got hurt. It's just I it's I, I don't luck. blame. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's bad luck. But I think if they just gave Lee the reins and let him carry it for a while, and then at Mania they let Karrion Cross finally win it, I think that would have given him so much more me- momentum going to the main roster. But I yeah. I just think the way that Vince handles. Uh, the way Vince handles buildups are just not the, good. The way he handles talent from NXT, period. And the back to where NXT and, and I'm sorry, uh, WWE and AEW really compete is the talent that comes in from the indie scene. And 
if you think there are wrestlers out there that are are watching how WWE is handling indie talent when they get to the main roster and they're not taking that into consideration, then there's something going wrong in your mind. Yeah, there's something not working there. There's something that's off there. There's, it, it, it's something with Vince. They don't take that talent well and move them up. That's why Chopper. that's why Gargano don't want to go anywhere. That's why the Elite didn't want to go there because they don't want them being in control of their product when they don't know how to handle that product coming from the indie scene. And that is the one way WWE and, and, and AEW are going to compete. Is bringing in future talent, and WWE always wants to bring in more talent, bring in more people because they want to always have that constant flow of talent going up to the main roster, going into NXT, and eventually, people are going to start to see that if you're going to AEW, being on the, on TV, still being able to do the gimmick that made you big, that's more successful to indie talent than going to the main roster and getting squashed, uh, getting all that momentum in NXT and then going to the main roster and not going anywhere. It's just, I don't think indie talent are going to be thinking of WWE as a desirable place much longer. You know, for I, me, I agree. I feel like with AEW, you're seeing more, more future talent grow. You see more future talent uh, building, building themselves up on AEW Dark, you're seeing the acclaimed. You're seeing uh, a couple new tag teams coming in, and I love what AEW is doing and allowing these uh, upcoming stars to finally have opportunities and really see Tony Khan. He really sees something in these younger talent, and I think it's working out perfectly for Tony Khan and his company. And I I really want to see where how everything turns out with the younger superstars. Before we really, before we get to our AW NXT stuff, look, just touching back on the Keith Lee stuff. Listen, I knew Keith Lee was going to fail on the roster the minute they changed his theme song to a WWE Create a Superstar theme yeah, song. Yeah, that's bad. And I and and I said, you got to be kidding me. His theme song was one of the top theme songs in the company. People loved this song, and they changed it. And I said, this is so ridiculous. I this can attest to Josh. I can attest to Josh's comment on this because Josh even I even told Josh Josh this. It sounds his theme song now. It sounds like something out of an old SmackDown versus Raw. That's game. exactly what it is. It's a creative yeah. superstar theme song. It's generic. It's boring. It's stupid. And then they had changed it again. Um, you know, to me, look, look at what the Young Bucks are doing, right? So who's the? They're they're giving constantly these new tag teams coming into AEW chances to face them. They're giving yep. them a chance to shine and grow, and. You know, even like a Joey Janela. Joey Janela is facing can face Kenny Omega this past week on AEW. That's a on Dynamite. That's a big thing. Look at um Taz's team with Will Hobbs and Ricky Starks and Brian Cage. They're going up with Sting. They're putting them in a moment with a guy like Sting. That's huge. You're giving those superstars the chances to succeed and exactly. really thrive. And and I think that's the part. And Triple H tries to do that too. Look, Triple H, he's trying to do that with Austin Theory when he had him face when he brought him up. up and, and and it's you know, this is the thing that's AEW's wanting to give guys a shot. And I feel like NXT is doing NXT does the same thing. It's w, the main roster that's not. That's that's well, really what it comes down to. If you look at how Vince books, when you lose a match. He won't let you gain momentum off of it. Mm -hmm. You could have the best no, match ever. Won't. You're not going to gain beat, momentum from a loss. Keith Lee beat Randy Orton his debut. He beat Randy Orton his debut, and then you heard nothing. AEW, the acclaimed, they're probably going to lose to the Young Bucks, but sure, they're going to have a good good match, and they're going to gain momentum and continue moving. And they're going to have good match. recognition from that match. You can you can lose a match and still get put over. Exactly. Exactly. And that does not happen in the WWE, and that is really what hurts younger talent on the main roster because they go up there, they lose to someone good, and then they don't go anywhere for a month and a half. Exactly. All right, like, guys. What is so Riddle doing? What is... I have like, no idea. I have no yeah. idea what Matt Riddle's doing. No, I, no like, idea. I don't think Vince knows what to do with him. I agree. At Let, this let's, point, I'm pretty lost with Matt Riddle and where the Well, it's not even called Matt Riddle. Now they just call him Riddle now. But let's let's get yeah, to our next dumb. let's get to our next segment before because it's already Mike, the time is flying. Let's get into our AEW NXT recap. Um 
Yeah, you know, Alex, we'll let, let's let we'll let the we'll let the guest go first. Um, and his thoughts, and then Alex will get your thoughts after. Okay. Um, when it comes to AEW and NXT, look, AEW beat them in the ratings again and everything like that. Lyle, what were your thoughts on AEW this week? I know it wasn't as good as the show last week. It was tough to top the show last week, but it was still a very good show this week. Yeah, I think it's a very good show. I think AEW has a lot of momentum right now. Um, Stay NXT helped. is good. <laughs> yeah. NXT is getting better because they actually have their main title on the show now. Um, like you said earlier, that's just bad luck. But them not having that on on the show and using their mid card title as the main title for a few weeks, I think that really hurt their product for a bit. And honestly, I don't think it, it was very good for a while. And I think now that Bauer's back and Cross is back, they're starting to. Oh, it's gaining big. a little bit more momentum. It's it's mm-hmm. getting better now, but mm-hmm. they still have to gain that momentum and, and really put on a few really good shows in a row. Last week was a step in the right direction. Um, I just think that AEW is the better show from top to bottom right now, yes. and I, I like everything that Team Taz is doing. I love it. I think it, it's great. Um, the women's division has gotten a lot better. Um, Definitely has. I, it, it's it's gotten better because they got depth, and they're starting to give them more time on TV. That's key. That is definitely I, key, and I agree with you. And I like how AEW is focusing on – they're focusing on multiple multiple women on the roster. You have Thunder Rosa. You have Britt Baker in, in, in an angle, which is getting pretty interesting, and I love, the, I love where that's going. But I do want to get your comments on the 14, the 14-man 14 tag team match, Lyle, and I want to ask you – what were your thoughts on that match? What What did you like about that match? Like, what stood out to you? Um, it was a different aspect. I don't think I've seen a fourteen man tag before, so I know that you're was not, a little different. You're not, you're not a big six five man tag guy, so I know that. No. Many people. Um. Well, I I don't <laughs> mind it if you're not okay. doing the awful spots throughout the entire match. Like, oh well, when you have everyone bundle up outside the ring and one guy jumps on top of them after another other is like you, you have New Japan do those giant matches all the time and they're fine. Um, I think it was different. I think it was good for advancing the inner circle storylines going on. I think that was the purpose of the match. So that on a weekly show, if the match fulfilled its purpose in, Advancing that storyline, I think it's fine. I, I it was nothing crazy about it, but I, I, it fulfilled its purpose to me. I agree. And what are your thoughts on uh, the inner circle? Do you think possibly there's more cracks in that group? Do you think MJF is going to make everything about him, and then a fight between Sammy Guevara is going to happen again? Um, with that storyline. I think it's going to end up being Jericho and MJF again, because I think they're they're going to end up clashing and it's going to um, potentially break up the group. If you watch certain characters' facial expressions when MJF is talking, and it's one thing that, uh, AEW does very well, is they have little tiny things in the background that you pay attention to. Santana was was giving MJF dirty looks that entire promo they did. Oh yeah, he was. Show. Santana he was, was not- giving. He always does, and I love it. I think it's great. It gives a different aspect. Aspect. It just shows a little bit different side of little attention to the detail that they do. Like when the Young Bucks won the tag titles, you had Hangman standing at the entrance, just awkwardly, really upset. And mm-hmm. it's something that AEW does very well. And I, I really like how they're showing who in that group one by one is getting upset with MJF. And another thing they're showing in the background of every promo, pretty much, is Wardlow and Hager staring each other down. And if you... You wanted to say something, Josh? No, I was going to ask you really quick. I was going to ask you really quick, um, because we got to go to break in a couple minutes anyway. I wanted to get your thoughts on the Kenny Omega stuff. Because that stuff is real... Because I know you've been dying for this cleaner to the cleaner to character to come back. Kenny is one of my favorite wrestlers in the world today. The one thing I really don't like that they're doing... Is they're showing one thing on Impact, and then on AEW, it's a little different. Now, I know the reports are that the Good Brothers are going to come to AEW. Hopefully, it's sooner than later, and they show that character that's on Impact, because I feel like that's a little bit more of the cleaner than the AEW, Kenny. And 
I would like them to show the same character on both shows. Hopefully after Final Resolution. Did you find the interview, yeah. though, with Callus on Impact and then the next day with Callus again? Did you find it a little weird, though, that it was the exact same interview and the same response that they gave on no, Impact? No, because there were probably a lot of people that didn't watch Impact. Um, there they was broke records, like though. 200... Yeah, they had their highest yeah, viewership, though. 250,000 people total if you combined mm -hmm. um, their live TV and then Twitch, Yeah, where AEW is getting 900,000 people. That's a big difference. So, it really is. So you got you can't assume everybody watched it. So I don't have a problem with that at all. Uh, uh, finally, finally, one more question. Yep. What were your thoughts about the acclaimed having a rap battle with SCU? I thought that was pretty entertaining. That that it was, was very fun. entertaining. Yeah, it, I, it really I enjoyed was. it a lot. You know, it was it was a fun segment. The match was good. It turned out really great. And I like how they're pushing uh, Anthony Bowens and Matt Caster towards the tag team match with the Young Bucks. I, I believe it's going to be great. And I feel like the acclaimed, they're, I feel like they're ready and they're going to bring their best performance against uh, the, the Young Bucks. So, again, we're joined here by former uh, former wrestling show host, uh, Lau Gillen from Takedown Breakdown with myself. And we're hoping, he, of course, he's always going to be back here in the near future with us. That's for sure. Uh, Lyle, we want to get your thoughts really quick. We have about five minutes left before we go to break and let you go. On NXT, where everything is going with them and everything like that, if they're, they're going the cross priest route with their match, um, which is fun. I think Damian Priest has definitely improved in the last month or two. Uh, and then Finn Balor against Kyle Riley again, which of course is always a banger match. What are your thoughts with the route they're going with some of their with their superstars and those matches coming up on? I believe it's New Year's Evil they're going to do some of. Yeah, that. You, New Year's Evil. I forget what day that is. Josh, do you know what day that is? I think that's January sixth. I want to say or third. Yeah, I don't remember. I think it might be sixth. It's a sixth. So, yeah. lot, what are your thoughts on those ideas that I just said to you about Cross Priest and uh, Balor O'Reilly again? Um, I think Balor O'Reilly will do very well. That'd be a great match. Um, they had a great match on Takeover. Uh, I I'm not the biggest fan of Damian Priest. I just not, don't no. think. Yeah, like I, I think he reminds me of Chuck Palumbo. I see him. I see Chuck Palumbo, and <laughs> it's just. I, I, I thought of that. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> That's on my show. I thought on the show we had. I thought of that first. <laughs> <laughs> we can go back to the YouTubes and we'll look at find the video. It. We'll find it again. <laughs> I forget what that episode was. I can't, what were we talking about? That was the was in your house. In your house with Sunny. It was <laughs> you and who else was on the show with us that day? Scott. It was um, Scott Nab. Scott Nab was with us too, and we were talking about it was Sunny and Chuck Palumbo on the talking. That's something I never thought in a million years we would discuss about. But um, <laughs> but you know. Chuck Palumbo, it's very blatantly obvious to me. He looks exactly like him. He's monotone, just like Chuck Palumbo. I just, I can't get into Damian Priest. I can't do it. I I see him and I just cringe. I like how they're pushing Karrion Cross. Like, this week was really good how they brought him back on the car. Well, he's their guy, Alex. Netflix. I mean, he, he, he's, he, he's yeah. basically, as they say, he's their big ticket. There, yeah, he definitely is. Yeah, and, and they had to outdo AEW to sign him. You know. Exactly, and the way the way this is going, I think having Cross back and seeing him compete, I'd like to see him compete for the title he never lost, the mm -hmm. NXT title. And whoever wins at N whoever wins at NXT New Year's Evil, better be ready because the clock will soon run out and Cross will be ready again to take on the victor. So I like to see the demon. I like to see the demon against Karrion Cross. That would be that phenomenal. is what I that would, would be, be very I, because remember yeah. Karrion. I don't Cross think they're gonna bring that character Karen. back. I don't think they will either. I think no, it's going to depend. And, and, and they, of course, would want Cross to win the match. They're not going to have the Demon character lose to, to Cross. They don't want to ruin that character. But no. um, we're going to hit the break. And when we come back, we have a lot of new segments. Lyle, hey, man, thanks for joining us. Seriously, dude. No problem. Pleasure pleasure having you us you thanks we, for coming on. We, 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 we and Josh really appreciate it. Yeah, man. We want you on in the near future for sure. And of we're going to talk more about that. And listen, dude, have a great rest of your day. Uh, have a great holiday. Stay safe and be well. All right, and say hi to your parents for me, would you? I will. Yes, both of you guys. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, if you ever need me on again, let me know. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Of course. All right, cool. guys. All right, Alex. Take us to break. Tell us what the fans are going to have when we come back. All right. So when we come back, 
on Off The Mat. We have the Hot Tag segment, and this is a new seg segment we are introducing where we will talk about upcoming and recent tag teams all here on Off The Mat on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was... It, it, it's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat. Aren't there? Rear facing, forward facing? I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You don't usually get a stock tip from a 16-year-old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures, a stock for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college. This is beyond a simple donation. It's the opportunity for America to invest in its kids and take an active stake in the future of the country. The return on your investment isn't money. What you get back is knowing you protected our potential. So one day, that potential can grow up to become surgeons and architects, executives and engineers, people who can change the future just by being a part of it. My name is Alicia, and I am your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. A public service announcement brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. This is Namdi Asamoah. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me, or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better, and kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. They'll challenge your authority. They'll try to break your will. They'll push you to the edge of your sanity. Because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, not theirs. Defend it. Who makes the payments? Who cleans it? Who drives it? You do. That's who. And in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch. Until you hear that click. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn those earrings today. I like those earrings. Gabby has those awesome earrings. I need to ask her where she got those, but that's just what she would want me to do. I'll have Michaela ask her for me. Buckle up, Sarah. Yeah, but then Michaela will be like, why don't you just ask her yourself? That's just like Michaela. Sarah, buckle up. Michaela's such a great name. I wish I was called Michaela. 
There's like a dozen Sarahs in my class. Hey, we're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh yeah, seatbelt. I forget sometimes because my brain is like busy, you know? I wonder if there's pizza at school today. Sometimes it can be tough to get through to your kids, but it's not impossible. Always make sure they're wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Remember, you have the keys, you have the power. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. It, it, it's the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Rest in peace. Welcome back to Off the Mat with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Off the Mat here every single Saturday at 12 p.m. on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Of course, my co host, Alex Lowe's. I'm Josh Silverberg. We want to thank Lyle Gillen again for joining us. Un- uh, unbelievable, awesome segment. Loved it. He's extremely yeah, he insightful. He's insightful. knowledgeable. Very he knows the business very, very well. So we want to thank him, of course, for coming on. And, of course, as Alex said earlier, would you please download our app? If you haven't downloaded it, if you missed our show, you can always rewatch it, okay? Or you can listen – I should say listen to it. You can see our clips, read our articles, on if you find it on the apple store go to type in wwsrn and if you have an android go to the google play store and type in worldwide sports also worldwide sports radio.com our brand new beautiful website is up and running so many great programs and shows and we're getting bigger and better each and every single week just like this show is all right alex let's let the fans know we have a couple of new segments uh in this coming yeah, hour we have the hot tag which we're going to get into now and the hot tag we're going to talk about upcoming and new uh, recent tag teams so i want to start off by talking about a tag team out of acw this is american combat wrestling wwn worldwide world wrestling network and this is a team called the rapture and i've known these guys for a long time very, very cool guys, really nice in person. They are very talented. And the Rapture, they were the longest reigning ACW and WCW XW tag team champion. I was going to say, WCW still around? <laughs> yeah, I, meant, I, meant WXW. I know you did. <laughs> the Rapture, they are my favorite tag team in Florida on the independent circuit because they put so much hard work and dedication into their matches. And they have become very huge stars in Florida. Their matches are always physical and fun to watch because you never know what they're going to do or what they're going to come up with in with their moves in the match. The Rapture, they recently dropped the ACW tag team titles to the Metro Brothers who are making themselves more known in Florida and in wrestling. And I hope to see the Rapture make their way to big opportunities very soon. Hopefully move up the ladder to AEW. That would be very sweet. Hey, listen, we want to give people uh, obvious chances, reasons to get excited about them. Uh, really quick for me, if I, I'll say one tag team, and then I'll like, throw it back to you, Alex. One tag team I want to talk about, and it's really something I've noticed, and in regards, it's in NXT. Um, it's Everrise. And to me, Everrise is a very interesting tag team because they got charisma. Um, if you l- watch them on Twitter, they're the funniest group. They just yell and scream. It's the funniest, funniest thing. They're from Canada, so they have that kind of French Canadian accent. So it adds a little bit. And you, you know, you think back to late '80s, early '90s. You're thinking like Rick Martel, Dino Bravo, and all those guys that were a part of WWE. Um, they have that Canadian accent. It's so funny, but they're very loud. You know, they have a bravado. They're very loud. Um, they're, they have a, they have a, they're obnoxious. They have a bravado to them that yeah. really, really. You know, it adds an element to their style, but their style is also really good too. And they're very funny, especially if they don't win a match. They're hysterical. And I love what um AEW's doing. Look at the what's the tag team match this week, Alex? It's it's the Young Bucks versus um The Acclaimed. The Acclaimed. They just got here and they're already well, they getting an AEW tag team championship they just match. They debuted on AEW Dynamite and they're already getting a tag tag title opportunity. 
Yeah, they are. And don't forget at TH2, they're getting more notoriety. Because remember, I think it was about two or three months ago, Alex, I asked you the question, where has TH2 been? And they were doing promos about them on Dynamite, about what they're doing, how they're growing. And now they've been back for the last couple of weeks now. And then don't forget yeah, the tag team before that. They who, are- the, who was the tag team the Young Bucks faced um, a couple of weeks ago? The Young tag team that just debuted on AEW. Um, oh, top flight. Thank you. They're another one. So that's the thing. AEW is the best tag team division right there with Impact. Um, yeah, they really are by far. You know, and it's yeah. unfortunate. Really quick. Sorry, Alex. Last thing. I want to mention the North um, on Impact. They're, they seem to be breaking up with this, which is such an unfortunate thing because the North to me is one of the better tag teams on the planet. Um, you know, I, I, I love what they've done. So to me, those are the tag teams that I have. And I, I like TH2. Like you said, mm-hmm. they've made a huge impact for themselves quickly in AEW. They had to. They were they were dry and stale the last few months. Yeah, they definitely were. They have competed against the Young Bucks and Best Friends, and I definitely want to see more of this team because they work together very well and they have very good chemistry. The Hybrid 2, I hope very soon we'll get a chance for the AEW World Tag Team Championships because they prove just about at every AEW show that they are in, that they are serious about climbing the ladder and make becoming a top tag team in AEW. Yeah, absolutely they are, and they're growing. And the thing about AEW is they have a very athletic tag team division, and I think that's something that NXT is very much lacking. Now, that's why I I, I, I mentioned Ever-Rise. Um because like I said, I think Everest could be a really fun tag team that you could see going forward. You know, you give them a couple of, you know, you give them mics and they they kill it. They kill on the mic. They really do. I, I, like, I like where they are right now. Everrise with against um the grizzled young veterans. I like mm-hmm. they did that, and they had the rivalry with um, Drake Maverick and Killian Dane. So that was a fun little rivalry that they had. And you saw it this week on NX on, on NXT when you had uh, Breezango come out and all the you know the undisputed era and Dane and Maverick. They're all fighting, so they're all trying to get that supremacy for the tag team championships. And that's really what it comes down to because look right now, only Lark and Danny Burch own those championships. Exactly. I think there's a lot of opportunity for these tag teams because the NXT tag team division to me, Alex is so wide open. You can it's make an impact. You can do anything with that tag team, that tag team division. You can because you it's, not, it's not great because it's not great. It's not no. a great division. So you can, you could stand out like Burch and Larkin have. And, uh, you know, I think that's where we stand on it. And I really think uh, I want to see what I want. What I want to see NXT do with their their tag team division. I want to see them throwing into a tag team tournament. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think that would be fair. They I did that the first time. A wise decision. Yeah. And I think it would help the product grow for the yellow brand and really give NXT the attention it needs and deserves. Yeah, because AEW did that look, and that's how SCU won the championships. And I think it would be interesting to see. Like I said, let's look. Let's call it what it is. NXT has lost so many tag teams the last couple of years that have got, you know, the, the revival. Of course, they went up to the main roster. Now they're on AEW as um, FTR. FTR. Um, I mean, you're talking about uh, the, you know, the um, who, the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Um, oh my God, what are their names? Oh, uh, can't remember now. What yeah. are their names? They're on Smack. They're the SmackDown Tag Team Champions with um, with I, uh, is it with King Corbin? No, no, it's not King Corbin. I'm trying to think. Hold on. Uh, let's talk for a second because I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the tag team champions. So right. I want to move on while you do that. I want to move on to to the acclaims. We mentioned a little bit about them earlier. The acclaim made their debut on Dynamite this week against SCU, and I I really enjoyed their match. But I think it, it, Street I, Profits, I, Alex. Sorry, Street Profits. Oh, uh, Street Profits. I don't know how we didn't remember that. Jeez, I just really I don't like, know. It's crazy to me. I think the build ups too quick, and to give them an AW tag opportunity like a championship opportunity but i just think that uh at the acclaims need a proper build up towards this and i think that aew is going to do that next week i think they're going to start building them up in promos and really get really show show the world and, and what this team is like and what they can do because we have not got enough of what they are like and how they compete and what kind of athletes they are 
Also, Alex, we didn't do this really quick before we get to our next segment. We didn't talk about the t-shirts that we're wearing today. So I guess oh, yeah, you're I going with the – you got Rob the – all right, so I went holidays because we're, we're not going to see the um, – or here, you know, we're not going to be with the listeners till after Christmas is over. So I went with my – hey, hey. I went with my Mark Briscoe. Briscoe. All I want for Christmas are my three front teeth. <laughs> so as you can see, Mark is, Mark is missing a lot of teeth, okay? <laughs> Um, but look, I, I bought this shirt too. I, I bought this shirt back in March because I know certain companies like Ring of Honor and everything, they're there, and also they had a great show at Final Battle yesterday. I watched it, it was phenomenal. If you didn't watch it, it was a really good show. Um, some brands are struggling, so you, it's about supporting the businesses, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But I bought this shirt from them, and um, look. I hope Ring of Honor keeps doing what they're doing and getting better. They're doing the best they can. They brought back the kingdom with with uh, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. And, you know, they got, um, you know, so much going on right now with EC3 over there. So they're doing well stuff. But uh, I didn't mean to go off topic really quick, Alex, but I know we have to get to our next segment. Yeah, let's get into our next segment now. It's the wrestling trivia. Boom, oh, here we go. How this is going to work is I'll ask Josh a question and he asked me a question. Okay. So the first question is, who was wrestler of the year in 1994? <laughs> oh, God. Who was wrestler of the year in 1994? It's... Can I ask for a hint what company they worked for? Because I'm going to say it's WWE. WCW. WCW. Wow. So 1994. Okay. Give me a minute. Don't start playing. Don't don't be like Arrow Marks and start playing like the Jeopardy song. It takes me off <laughs> when people do that because I didn't put so much pressure on me. You'll start to see me sweat, and nobody wants to see that. Um, and I'll sweat in areas you don't want to know where I'm going to sweat. So we're not going to go that route. Um, <laughs> um, WCW. Uh, was I don't know. I mean, I guess you. Is it Hulk Hogan? Yep, you're right. Hawk Hogan. I should. You know what it was? I didn't know if he was in WCW yet. I was going to say Ric Flair, but then I forgot. I think Ric Flair was in WWE at that point. You know what I mean? All right, Alex, I'm going to. Do you want to ask me the next one or do you want me to ask you one now? You can ask me one. All right, I'll ask you one. Who were the first two opponents to ever compete in the Hell in a Cell match? That'd be Mankind and the Undertaker. <laughs> Mm, no, the answer is The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. That oh. is where Kane debuted and ripped the door open. So the the answer is The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. But you were close. You had it. You were there. Yeah, I was there. No. All right. I what's the, what's the what? And again, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we want you, the fans, also out there to reach to uh, reach out to us if you ever want to join this segment. But what's the next one, Alex? When did the Shields' first match take place? Oh, man. So let's see. I know I was at their first WrestleMania match in 2013 when they fought Sheamus, Randy Orton, and... That was at WrestleMania. Big 30. show. 30, I think. No, it was 29. Remember, they did the three-man match. Oh, it was 29. I was at that one. No. No, because remember, uh, 30, they were... Yeah, because 30, they were all in different match. No, that was 31. Blah, 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 30. It was I know it was twenty nine. That was when their debut WrestleMania match was. Yeah. Um. No, because remember at thirty they had that stupid match with the Road Dog, Billy Gunn, and oh, yeah, Kane. Yeah. Um. When was their first? Are you saying what year it was, or who were they facing? The year it was. Okay. The year it was twenty nine. Okay, so twenty eight was so. Oh, you say two thousand twelve? Yeah, you're correct. Yes. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Two for two. All right, Alex. I'm gonna give you a good one. I'm trying to think of one. Let me think really quick. I want to think of one that's going to make it a little... Okay. Uh, when The Undertaker lost to Brock Lesnar after the match was over, what injury did The Undertaker sustain? Mm. You like that one, right? I think it was a concussion. What that was one, so you got it. I'm gonna give it to you. That was one, the other was a broken hip. Oh, so yes, so he did have a concussion. You are correct, Alex. That is a good one. All right, last one for me. Can I go three for three today and bat a thousand? 
How many times has Ric Flair been champion? Oh my god, I should know this. How stupid am I? 15. No, 16. Oh, damn it. You were one off. <laughs> you were one off. Damn. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. I'll give you an easy one. I'll give you an easy one. Will Wrestle Dynasty at Madison Square Garden next year for New Japan, will that be the first event that New Japan has ever held at Madison Square Garden? No. Okay. What was the first event? We just talked about it before the show started. There's my hint to you. I was at it, remember? It was the Supercar show. G1 Supercar, that's right. New Japan and Ring of Honor were there together. I was at that show with Lyle Gillen. I was at that show with him. We got tickets for 20 bucks two days before the show started. So, like I said, wrestling fans, we want you to be a part of this. It's exactly. so much fun. We, want, we, we really, really do. want you to be a part, part of the show. How did I not get the Ric Flair? I'm so embarrassed. How did I not get the Ric Flair one correct? Damn. I was so close. I was one. I almost said 14. I almost so, said 14. Yeah, me and Josh, we want to hear from the fans. We want to hear from wrestling fans. Even if you're a backstage worker or somebody like that in the business, we'd like to hear from you. And just uh, we we're, we want to have fun with you. We want to have fun and entertain you, the wrestling fans. And that, we don't mean having fun with you playing with you, Johnson. All right, we want to have no. fun with you, okay? Because I know Alex sometimes thinks about that, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. It's time to get to our finishing move now. Yes, it is. All right, you want me to go first, Alex? Or are you going to go first? Oh wait, there's TLC. You want to talk about no, that? No, well, we could do that in our finishing move. We could do we could do that in our finishing move if you want. You want to do you, we could do a little preview of TLC really quick for five minutes. Yeah, let's do a quick preview okay. of TLC. So we'll do the three main matches. Let's do the three main matches that everybody's talking about, Alex, which is AJ Styles, Drew McIntyre, uh, Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton in, in an Inferno match, and uh, Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. So we'll start with Owens Reigns. Who are you think it takes this one and why? The storyline has been great the last few weeks with that. Uh, I feel like Roman Reigns is going to take it against Kevin Owens because uh, I, I feel like this this feud, it's not ready to be over right away. I feel like this feud is going to go on a little bit longer between Roman Reigns and, and Kevin Owens. And I feel like they're going to get – I feel like Kevin Owens is going to have a partner involved in this, and I feel like it's going to be Daniel Bryan. That really? Gets yeah. You know, I, I have heard that they could be going down that route for Mania. I know they're, they are – from what I've heard, they're trying to decide who they want Reigns to face at Mania, which leads me to believe he's going to hold the title for a while. I've have heard I have heard Daniel Bryan's name thrown out. I don't think they're going to do the Rock this year. No, I think, I, I think if they're, I think if they're I think if they're going to do the Rock, they're going to wait till the year after and when it's back in L.A. Yeah, I think they're, they're going, going, to going to do it in Tampa that. next year. I have heard Big E's name thrown. Um, I would be fascinated with that. I think Big E deserves a push. In my case, I'm going to say Roman Reigns too, though. I think Roman's going to hold this. I think Roman's not going to lose the belt to Mania. No, not That's what they're setting this up for. Way. So for me, it's Roman. All right, let's get to our next match. Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles. Alex, I guess I'll start first. I'm going to go with Drew. And I think Drew's going to hold the belt too for some time. I don't know who's going to end up defeating Drew. I'm kind of curious. Um, it's going to sound crazy. There is a rumor that I have heard. I have heard the name. They they want to maybe do a triple threat match. I believe they. I have heard. I believe it's Drew McIntyre versus Keith Lee versus Brock Lesnar at, Wrestle, at WrestleMania. That is the that's rumor. Sweet. That is the that is the rumor that I've heard that they want to have those three men against each other for the championship. I would be ecstatic if they were to do that. Lyle's right when he said that Lee is a little dry on the mic because yeah, he his, is. Some of his mic work is too. It's, it's cliche. Too, it's too cliche. It's, it's cheesy. Yeah. It's too rah rah. Hey, I'm gonna be the guy, and this is this is my place. It's too, I'm gonna be the face of the company. That's exactly it. So for me, I'm gonna go with Drew in this one. I think Drew's in it for the long haul. I think they had him lose to Randy Orton, and the reason being is because they wanted Randy to get closer to the Ric Flair threshold of being the championship for a certain number of times. So I'll go with Drew McIntyre in this match. I'm gonna go with Drew as well, based on what you said, because I feel like last the the last time Drew took on Randy Orton, 
they didn't really focus as much on Drew McIntyre. I or, agree. And now he's got a guy like AJ Styles in this match who can make Drew. He can make Drew already. look good. He can make Drew. Styles can make anybody look good. Alex, yeah. Alex Styles can make a sex doll look good. Okay. That's how long he could go. Okay. So that for me, uh, for me, so for me, I, 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 that's how good AJ is. Yeah. It's, AJ is phenomenal. He's been in the wrestling business for a long, long time. He's yes, one he of has. the top tier performers in wrestling. And I love everything he does. He's, he's, he's great on the mic. He's a great wrestler, grappler. He knows how to take people to the mat. He, he knows how to make things interesting. And that's what I like about AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. That, exactly. Let's get to our last match. You're going to have the Inferno match. And I'm curious how they're going to do I think it's like a Firefly. What kind of match is it? Like a Firefly Inferno uh, match or whatever it is, Alex? I believe you have it up on your screen. Firefly correct? Inferno match. Oh, I was correct. Look at that. Um, I'm going to go with Bray Wyatt in this one. I think the Fiend's in it for the long haul. I do love that they're giving him Orton because Orton is such a good heel as well. So it's kind of interesting how they're going with this. I am curious how they do this match, the creativity that they put into this match. So I'm going to go with Bray Wyatt in this one. And he's wrestled in this match type before. Remember, he fought Kane in an Inferno match. So he's been into this before. I'm going to go Bray Wyatt as well, just by alone his experiences in these matches and the storylines and how they put everything together. I love how they put everything cinematically with Bray Wyatt. It works for him. It makes it it makes it so interesting, and Bray Wyatt he has grown a very much in the past two years. He's improved a lot, and I love what they're doing with Bray Wyatt, and it's working out for him. And I, I I'm definitely excited about this match, and I'm wondering how they're gonna pitch Randy Orton in this match, how they're gonna get him involved. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. I love it. And I love that you said the word cinematic because that's how I feel like they're going to go about this. They're going to make it a cinematic style match. But I hope everybody enjoys TLC tomorrow. Alex and I do. We're both going to tune in. It's going to be a very good show, I think, hopefully. hopefully it's got, it's got, I mean, it's got promise, so we'll see. All right, Alex, let's get to Time the finishing, finishing move. move. Yep. Yep. You want to go first? Yep. My Lady, finishing move is actually... Ladies first. Ladies first. So, Alex, go. <laughs> it's actually a funny story. And okay. I, I, I didn't see it happen. But I wasn't really there. I wasn't working at the time. But my mom came good. home. My mom came home from the grocery store, and she's like, uh, "Something crazy just happened at Publix." I'm like, "What? What? What happened? Like, what went down?" And she told me these a 30 year old guy and a 16 year old were brawling by the deli. That doesn't seem legal because he's underage. Yeah, they were fight, but the 16 year old was holding his own. My mom was telling me this kid was holding his own against a 30-year-old guy. Well, the 30-year-old should be in jail because technically that's beating up a minor. So there you go. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but he, the, was, he was holding his ground. Is that the time, Alex, is that the time that they forgot you in the house? No. <laughs> when <it> went to <laughs> no. Oh, man. Uh, my finishing move is going to be Lyle Gillen, and I want to thank him for coming on today, dude. He was so much fun to have. His insight with the wrestling business is great. He's been watching it for so long. Um, you know, and who knows? Maybe we can make him an integral part to the show and something like that. We never know. That's definitely something I'm sure Alex and I will discuss. He's so, and I told Alex, he's so knowledgeable. Yeah, he, he knows his stuff. He and knows, and he knows everything. Stuff. Yeah, and he's great, and he's... He's somebody that brings um, energy, and I and I and I love it. And my other finishing move, you know what, is going to be to you, Alex, because you did a great job today, my friend. And I want to make it known for you, you did a, you've done, you have improved drastically from when we first started, dude. And and I could say this as a co-host and as a friend, I'm very proud of you from where you've came from and everything like that. So kudos to you. So I want to throw that positivity your rate, man. All right, fans, that's it for us today. Don't forget to please watch the and listen to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network every single day because there's different programming on. Alex, how can the fans get involved with us? How can they reach out to us? And how can the fans watch and listen the Worldwide Sports on the, with the Worldwide Sports Radio Network? So you can watch us on the Worldwide Sports Radio, Net Radio Network on their Facebook page and on their Twitter. The Twitter handle for the Worldwide Sports Radio Network is at WWSRN underscore radio. Again, my Twitter is at Show Slows. Josh's Twitter, Josh's Twitter is at Josh Silverberg. Mm -hmm. And you can also follow all, 
our Facebook page and Twitter at off the mat WWSRN. Also, don't forget to download that app again, the WWSRN app. It's absolutely free. You can get all of our shows on there. You can check out all the different varieties and things we have available on the on the app. You can get the app from the Google, the Google Play Store and from the Apple App Store. And it, we have so much that's coming in the next year with the Worldwide Sports Radio. It's going to be a big Network. year. It's going to be a huge year. It's, it's going to be a massive year. And, how, Alex, can the fans call into the show as well? Um, Currently and right now, I don't have a phone. Currently, we, they can't call in. But oh, you, they can't call in. Okay. But you can tweet at us. Just tweet, Just tweet at, at us. Facebook message us too. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for Off the Mat here This for, for, for Saturday's ep- new episode. We hope you enjoyed and uh, I we hope you had fun with our new segments and new ideas, and we hope that we you will stick around with us because there's so much more that we are bringing to this network and to this show. Alex, really quick, let's also give a shout out to all the fans and listeners out there um, because we're not going to see them till next Saturday. Uh, so please be safe out there. We're wishing all of you, if you celebrate Hanukkah, yeah. happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, happy Merry, holidays. Merry, yes, a Merry Stay Christmas safe. to everybody. Merry please Christmas. please be careful with family members when you're doing your gatherings, okay? COVID is going up again because of these gatherings. You must be, must be, must be careful, okay? Wash your hands. Wash, Wash your hands, hands, all right? Don't don't pick at your ass and rub it on your face afterwards, okay? <laughs> so don't do that. Um you know, you know, don't do what Speedy PD does, and and also, by the way, put put on some boxers before. You know, if, put on boxers first, then your pants. Okay, so do that. Okay, but we want to wish seriously everybody a happy and safe holidays, a merry Christmas, a happy Hanukkah. Be safe. Uh, don't forget as well. Remember, you may want to see your family, but listen, would you rather see them this year and you know seclude them to the virus, or would you rather hold it off and see, be with them for many more holidays? That's the other thing. So a happy holidays. Alex, my friend, I know I'll talk to you during the week, but I want to wish you and your family a very happy holidays as well. Thank and you, everything like Thank that. you, your family as well. Thank you so much. All right, listeners, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. For, that is it for us here on Off the Mat on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Enjoy TLC tomorrow. Have a happy holidays, and we will talk to you next week. Take care.